Guys, we need to take it back to 2019 and talk about all the latest beauty guru and influencer tea. We have Jaclyn Hill reminiscing on her past scandals, James Charles being called out for looking for friends in the DMs, and Emma Chamberlain returning to YouTube after deciding to take a step away. It's a mess, so let's get into it. Let's start off with Miss Jaclyn Hill. Jacqueline's time on YouTube and her experience being an influencer has definitely been a rocky one. Every single launch that Jacqueline has ever had, either with Morphe or her own company, has ended up in some drama. Something always goes wrong and it made a lot of people lose faith in Jacqueline's products. In the last two years, Jacqueline has really taken a step back and has mainly focused on her own brand. I'm supplying my new Silky Hydrating Lip Oil, launching in 10 shades this week. Super hydrating and makes your lips look soaking wet, just like my- She hasn't done a collab with Morphe since 2020, and she's really kept it to herself and her brand. This past Thursday, Jacqueline launched her new collection of bronzers, highlighters, and lip oils. Right before her launch, she put out a multi-post Instagram story, reminiscing on her past failed launches and the drama that followed. She wrote, As I'm awaiting my new launch on Thursday, I can't help but think about all my past launches and how much has changed in my career, the industry, and social media. My Jaclyn Hill palette created with Morphe. We broke worldwide records on this day. 220,000 palettes in 42 minutes sold. Insane. And that's very true. That was really the peak of Jaclyn's career. She was at the height of her YouTube career, everyone looked to her for makeup tips and tutorials, and she really hyped up the launch of her Morphe palette. <laughs> it launched in June of 2017, and I swear everyone owned this palette. It was used by professional makeup artists, it was seen in documentaries, celebrities were using it. It was a huge success. Normally Morphe can be pretty low quality, but Jacqueline had her own formula and it was truly one of a kind. She then moved on to her next big launch, which was Champagne Pop. She wrote, This highlighter broke every record in Sephora's history. I'll never forget getting that call and sobbing my eyes out. So thankful for this moment in time. The next big launch Jacqueline had was her vault collection with Morphe. She talked about what she was going through during this photo shoot and wrote, When I shot this campaign, I was in the middle of my divorce and no one knew about it except my close friends and family. We shot six full looks in two days while I was dealing with the most heartbreaking time of my life. By the time this launched, I was dating Jordan and this was one of the most successful launches of my career. She then went on to talk about the launch of her second Jaclyn Hill palette in 2020. She said, I remember shooting this campaign and thinking, there is no way this palette is going to sell as well as the others. But I was passionate as hell about it. So I did it. I was very challenged on this shoot in ways I had never been before. It was one of the biggest paychecks of my life when it launched. Then we moved on to her lipstick disaster. She wrote, Then this happened. I'll never forget this day. I had my mom by my side the whole time. My family was there cheering me on. I had the love of my life by my side. My dreams were finally coming true. Little did I know, the hardest time of my entire life including my divorce and the death of my father, was about to happen. I cried every day for months, deleted my social media in a panic, didn't know how to girl boss, felt completely alone and confused because I didn't have answers. When I was in Italy developing my highlighters, I forced myself to get out of my hotel room to get content for you guys one day, but I spent the rest of the time throwing up 24-7 from anxiety and excessive drinking. I tried so hard to be an inspiration for you guys, but I was seriously dying on the inside. Photos like this were followed by panic attacks, me getting drunk, puking all day. I was an absolute disaster because everything I had ever dreamed of was shattered. Then I launched more lip products. I seemed confident, but I was terrified and so insecure. I was being called fat, ugly, washed up, and irrelevant by thousands of people on the internet every day during this time. This was one of the most humbling times of my life. I had lost so much money, fame, and fortune, but I chose to keep going because I knew this was my destiny. Own your mistakes and own who you are. Then, Ulta Beauty believed in my brand. When I felt so low, they had my back. I cried so much on this day, especially seeing my highlighters in store. 
It was such a painful process to get here. So weird being one of the most successful beauty influencers in the world and then very quickly becoming the most humbled. And that's all very true. Jacqueline was on top for so long. Everyone always looked to her for beauty advice, but with the constant launches with Morphe, the failed launches, and then you throw on her handling customer feedback poorly, it really made people lose faith in her brand. Luckily for Jacqueline, she's taken a step back from pushing Morphe and is now focused on her brand. Before we move on to the next topic, I just want to give a big thank you to Adam and Eve for sponsoring today's video. When you shop with Adam and Eve, you guys can use code SPILL at checkout for 50% off of one item in your cart and free shipping to the US and Canada. Adam and Eve has 24-7 customer support, 90-day hassle-free returns, and the best part is 20% of their profit goes to help fight the spread of HIV. Love that. Once again, that's code SPILL for 50% off of one item in your cart and free shipping to the US and Canada. Keep in mind, some exclusions do apply. Thank you, Adam and Eve, for sponsoring today's video, and let's get on to the next topic. Moving on, we need to talk about James Charles. As we all know by now, James found himself in some hot water last year when he was caught in the DMs of fans who weren't exactly in his age category. Not only were their ages problematic, but people found it extremely weird that he was using his Instagram as his own personal Tinder. Well, James is being called out again for using his DMs as a way to find friends. James posted both a TikTok and an Instagram story complaining about how he wants spontaneous friends that he can go to movies and escape rooms with. Oh, oh, I need more spontaneous friends. Where do I find these people? All of my friends in my life are very much like schedule in advance. Let's do next Friday at 4 p.m. type of people, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I need people that are down for literally anything at any time. You want her to go to dinner? I'm ready. You want to go to a movie? Which one do you want to see? You want to do an escape room? Let's do two, okay? You want to go to the beach at night? I'll bring my bathing suit. I'll bring snacks and you can stop and get drinks on the way. You want to go laser tagging? Bitch, I'm ready. Want to go rock climbing? Climbing? You name it, I'm there and I'm ready for a good time. Where are these people? Submit your applications because, ugh, I'm bored. <laughs> A lot of people didn't like the fact that James was asking his young followers to submit applications to be friends with him. It kind of felt like a way for him to meet people in the DMs without being called out again for using his Instagram as a Tinder. I mean, you don't really ever hear other influencers telling their fans to submit applications to be friends. Submit your applications. He then went on to say that he checked his DMs and he had tons of people messaging him, offering him friendship. I just checked my DMs and I'm getting so many sweet messages from you guys being like, let's hang out. I'm in LA. Let's do this. Let's do this activity. I love the energy and I would love to hang out with you guys. I'm sure you're all so fucking fun. I have a really interesting thought and maybe this is a conversation on a podcast in the future because I feel like this is not going to fit on my Instagram stories and it's like very, not deep, but whatever. Um, he then said that he would love to be friends with regular people, but he doesn't know how he would vet them. One thing that I like is really interesting and frustrating about being an influencer or a celebrity or whatever you want to call it is it is really, really hard to meet new people and make new friends simply because of trust and the life that I live is abnormal, right? It's really hard to meet new people because you don't know what their intentions are. You don't know, you know, what reason they're trying to get close to you. And that really sucks because I would love to meet new friends. I'm a very social person. I love the friends that I have, but I'm always down to, you know, hang out with new people and try new things. I really wonder all the time if I was not in this position, right? I was not an influencer. Maybe I, like, I never became an influencer after high school, got a normal job after that because I would have graduated last year and now I was just like living a normal life. I always think to myself, in that scenario, what would my friend group look like? What would my inner circle look like and who would I have around me? Because I have no idea. Almost every single person in my life now, who I love dearly, I'm not complaining, but are people that I have met either on the way up or at the top. So there are other influencers or people that I've been able to build trust with over a very long period of time. It's very hard for me to meet new people and to trust new people because there's a lot of factors, right? But I always think to myself in like a different universe, if my path had went a different way, would I be in a relationship? Would I have a, you know, amazing group of friends? Would I have a best friend soulmate? That's like, you know, my everything that I hang out with every single day but I've never met them because our paths went a different way. And if so, how do I find them? Because I want to meet those people. I don't care if they're regular. 
or have zero followers. Like I want amazing people, amazing people in my life. Like I have amazing people in my life, but I want more amazing people in my life, people in our lives, right? So that's the thing is like, I would love that, but I just don't know how to find them. Or if I do find them, how to like vet them and make sure that they are actually amazing people. They could be in my DMs right now saying, hey James, let's go bowling. Hey James, let's go to the movies. And I would just be scrolling past, not having a clue in the world that like that person was destined to be a soulmate. Isn't that sad to think about? I don't know if I'm overthinking this or what, but I really think James needs some sort of social media training. With the history that James has, he should be staying far away from asking people to DM him and submit applications to be friends. It's just such a weird thing to ask when you're pretty much a celebrity that has tons of young fans. Yes, it's sad that his friend and his relationship pool is kind of limited due to his job, but that's the reality of having influence. There's pros and cons, and unfortunately, this isn't an episode of Hannah Montana. Anyways, here's what people had to say. He never learns, huh? How many times do we have to teach you this lesson? Until he is held accountable either by law or the public, there are still influencers like Jaclyn Hill and Manny MUA who still support him. He will keep doing the same things because he thinks he is invincible. And that's the truth. James never really faced any real consequences for what happened last year, besides maybe losing his Morphe collab, which was never really lost anyways. If he keeps getting away with the same behavior, why would he ever change? Finally, let's end this video off on a positive note and talk about Emma Chamberlain returning to YouTube. Back in December, Emma posted her last vlog and then took a step away from YouTube. In the vlog, she never mentioned that she was leaving or anything, so everyone was expecting to see a video from her the following week. As the weeks went on, there was no new videos from Emma and her fans began to worry about her. She eventually addressed her decision for taking a step back during an episode of her Anything Goes podcast. She said she felt a lot of pressure to post every week and that wasn't really realistic for her. She was putting out content that she didn't necessarily love and the content she was posting just wasn't really meeting her standards and she was posting for the sake of posting. She said that she needed to take a step back, take a few months off, and really think about the direction she wanted to take her channel. For the past few months, Emma has been doing amazing, even without YouTube. She's had so many amazing opportunities thrown her way, and she's really broken through that influencer bubble. She's been doing mainstream events like the Met Gala, Fashion Week with Louis Vuitton, and she even appeared on Jimmy Fallon last week. Even though Emma has broken through into that mainstream celebrity world, she finally came back to her roots and posted a video last week. The video is titled, What's Good in New York? You can really tell by this video that Emma is feeling inspired again for YouTube. She made this really cute video where she asks people in New York what their favorite places to go are, and then she goes and visits those places and tries them out for herself. It was honestly just a really nice and happy video, and everyone in the comments is loving it. People always said that her old videos feel like she's the only person in the world. This video feels like she's become a part of the world. I hope Emma knows how genuinely happy we are that she's back. She did exactly what she said she would, came back when she could try something new out and expand. I love her so much and how she wants to evolve. Emma also captioned her video, happy to be back. So hopefully she stays for a while. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about everything down below. What do you think about Jacqueline reminiscing on her past drama? What do you think about James seeking friendship over on Instagram? And are you happy to see Emma back on YouTube? Let me know and I'll see you next time.